the best price and had the best recommendations. Okay, that's how. Where, what did she base that on? She called six different companies, and of course, I'm her neighbor. And she said, "Do you want to share this project?" So of course, I went along with it. Little did I know I would be out two thousand dollars. Well, what did they do wrong? What did Keystone Fence, Keystone Fence do wrong? Well, we signed the contract back in May. They came out June 15th, and they removed all of our fencing, um, but never came back to put it back up. Is it up now? Well, I had to hire a new contract. Wait a minute. To do that. So these guys took your money and never did any. They only tore it down. How much did they take up front? They took uh, 2000 from me. Yeah, and how much from your neighbor? Um. Um, one thousand eight hundred and sixty-eight dollars. So basically, basically four, four grand. grand. Okay, and for four grand, how much would it have cost to have that demolished, that fence, and taken away? Gosh, I'm not sure. What Maybe. I'm saying is, they owe you whatever. What What was this contract right? supposed to be? He was supposed to replace all. Right. How much? Add to what What was the total going to be? My total was going to be thirty three hundred. What was the total total going to be? Um, roughly seven thousand five hundred. Is that what the contract said? My contract said thirty three hundred, and my neighbor said okay, four thousand. Right, right. Okay, so seventy five hundred. Here's the deal. Yes. If you can have the rest of it completed for thirty five hundred, you have not been damaged by the breach. Of contract. If, however, the tearing down of the fence was only worth a thousand dollars, let's say, then that mm-hmm. company would owe you three thousand dollars. My question is, how much would it have cost someone to hire someone to take down that fence? How much? That's a great- well, well, you have to figure it out. And here's why, Brandy. We can't waste time sending somebody out there to find out that you broke even. So I'm not telling you that we don't want to help. You have to do for me this. I know you paid four grand up front and you guys got nothing. Well, you got a, a fence torn down. I would like you guys to figure out how much would it have reasonably cost to hire someone to take down that fence in the same fashion the other company did it. Then we'll see if you've been hurt or not. And if you've been hurt, we're going to warn a lot of people about Keystone Fence and Deck. In fact, people should be warned right now until we figure out more. 303-713-TALK. In the, you know, we have Zero Res with us. We also have some, uh, some guys on the referral list that this topic comes up all the time. TJ and, J, uh, TJ and Jason, now um, it's um, Garage Kings. Uh, garage Kings do garage floors. Do you know how many times people have asked, who do you get for garage door floors? Who do you get? Now, there is, uh, there, first of all, let's just talk about garage floors. Everyone's going to say, oh, you mean epoxy, because that's what we know them to be. Um, what are the new materials, by the way, if not epoxy? What are they? What are this called? Is it technically an epoxy anyway? It's a, it's a multi-plastic or not? No, it's, um, it's a polyaspartic, so it's in the... What, what would say that slowly. Sorry, polyaspartic, so it's different polyspartic. than epoxy. Yeah. What is it? It's in the polyurea family, so it's different than epoxy. It's completely flexible, bendable. Um, it's bulletproof stuff. Polyurea on the internet means a lot of urine. So, and that's where we deal with it. No, no, <laughs> yeah, right. no. no. Um, I lo- I looked it up one time. I'll tell you why. Somebody else was, you know, when I was looking for the floor before I knew you guys, and I looked it up, and it said something about. Oh, it was funny. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. So this is, um, oh, there is another kind of polyurea. Yeah, it's a protect and endure. Polyurea is pretty popular. It's a type of elastomer derived from, it says, a reaction of two products. So, okay, so how long does it take to lay it down? So typically we do the garages in one day. Yeah, see, I have that coating, and I love that material. I mean, it seems bulletproof. I have dropped iron things on it. I've scraped it, you know, scraped things across the floor, dragging them. I, I can't do damage to the dang thing. I'm serious. I love it. So um, wh- can you do it in one day? Yeah, absolutely. A we- lot of people don't like being put out. Now, right. uh, any size, I mean, any big garage you can do in a day? We can do up to 2,000 square feet in a day. Well, that's most garages. Yeah. All right. We, um, we have more coming up. 
if you guys have any questions about garage floors, we get so many questions about that. First of all, you can do the sidewalks and aprons, right? And and patios as well? Yeah, front porches. Anything. Back patios, well, actually, you can do wood. Yeah, yeah, we can lay down on trailers. And, and it anything. sticks to wood. It sticks to wood, yeah. So if you have like a garage floor and you have like those wooden steps people put in, you can do those, and they look beautiful, and they're strong. I've never even thought about it, that on a no, wood floor you, or in the back you, of our trailer. We yes, covered trailer. Yes, you can. And we run our motorbike. Yes, you can. Yep. Put that it on there. Be awesome you can do. put it on a wood trailer for sure. Now, where there's planks on the trailer, obviously, you're going to have, I don't know, what, what do you guys, it would be planked, right? I mean, you can't stem that that. That, that hole. gap. If it, but I would put a sub. What I would do if I had planks, put I'd put down. a subfloor down, yeah. a very thin, and then have this stuff put on. Of course, the subfloor has to be strong enough not to. F- well, it can flex a bit. That's the that's great the thing about it. You said it, yeah. it flexes with it. So yeah, that's the great thing about it. But it doesn't flex as much, let's say, as a rhino coating for a, for a, a pickup truck, right? Correct. Yeah, it's it's a hard material. It's not rubber or anything. But it won't crack just on the slightest shift. Exactly. So like cold weather and stuff. No, no, doesn't it won't affect it. Not lot. affected at all, no. Yeah. We got more coming right up. Hi, Tom Martino here. Welcome to the show. 303-713-TALK. I think I took Annie already. Yes, I did. And uh, let's find out what we can do for you. Derek, welcome. Hi, Derek. What's happening? Hold on, let me get you off the speaker. Sure thing, sir. Okay. What's going on, Derek? Hey, I've been working for this company, man, for like since 2005, October. Okay. And they promised me. 14 years. Yeah, and and now. What did they promise you? They told me they're giving me a service pay, and he, was, he told me that, like, uh, we, we'll give you, like, a thousand dollars a year for what? If we if we separate. Oh and, oh uh, oh! In other words, a severance. If if ever you separate, you get like you know a thousand for every year you've been there. Yeah, that's what the, the agreement was on. When you say an agreement, how many employees are there? Now, no, yeah, I mean, how many had this? Ag- how many had this agreement? I don't know. I was with him when it, when it was only 13 of us. Okay, did 13 of you have this agreement? I don't really know. Here's the problem, Derek. How are you going okay. to prove it? If they say, we never said that, that's not a policy. Not, not one employee can verify that. There's nothing in writing. What would you do? How would you prove it? Well, uh Doug, one of the one of the guys got some severance pay. Okay, he uh, he was up uh, he was in St. George. How much did he get? I think he told me he got eleven thousand. Well, Derek, unless there is some written company policy, they actually can give some people severance and some people not. It, they can do whatever they want so long as they don't do it illegally. And illegally means they take all of white people and they say only white people get bonuses or severance or only black people get this or that. No, I'm saying that's how it would be illegal or only Muslims will do this or only Catholics. But but uh, the old people will get this. Young people get this. That, that Those are the things covered by law, the age, the religion, the ethnicities, oh, okay. but the, the sex. Okay. However, if all they did was gave a guy a severance because they like him and they don't give you one because they don't like you, if that was the case, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, it, it, so long as it's not a discriminatory practice overall. Now, the other oh, thing, okay. you, so so if we call this company and say, why didn't this, first of all, did you get fired or did you leave? How'd you become separated? No, what happened was I went from making about 1500 a week to about 400 a week. And they were still telling me what I was going to do. I was going to stay because I like the company. But what? What? Where does the severance come in? Where does the severance? Where does the severance come in, Derek? Did you leave? Yeah, I left. 
Okay, so you were, uh, first of all, most severance, just so you know, most severance does not cover resignation, nor termination. Severance is a layoff due to slow business or a sale or something like that. Severances don't usually come when the employee voluntarily separates or becomes a jerk and gets fired. It usually only covers things beyond their control. Like they have to lay off was. people. It was like my money won. I wasn't making the same money. And, and he told me I'm a full-time employee. I have to stay on. I can't get pick up a part-time job. Derek, and, I, I, I can't argue about that now, bro. It's done. Okay. Now, what I want to know is do you have any proof that he promised this? Did anyone hear it? No, no. So you know what's going to happen now? They're going to deny it. You could put in a complaint. Put in. Listen, I will say one thing about Colorado. It has a responsive labor board. I swear to you, the the Department of Wage and Hour or whatever they call themselves, labor in Colorado is very proactive for workers. They really are. If you put a complaint in and simply say, you know, I'd like to um, put in a complaint. And I think I was uh, due severance, and they're very unfair and all of that. They'll look into it. Now, and you say severance was part of your whole overall promise to work. They're going to look at it. Now, they may not do anything, but sometimes they investigate companies if they get enough complaints. 303-713-TALK. This hour brought to you, by the way, by GenesisTotalExteriors.com. Genesis Total Exteriors, and I say Genesis because they are, from beginning to end, with planning through construction, Genesis Total Exteriors, you hear all the time problems with people here, right? Okay, Steve, you want to know about what? Hi, Steve, what's going on? Um, Yes, sir, what's happening? Okay. Okay. Um, My wife is flying to Arizona to look at some new houses that we are possibly going to retire in. Okay. Now, if we ask for ADA stuff, does the builder have to do it because we asked for it? Or can they say, you have to do it? I mean, how does that work with a new house? With a new house, a brand new house, they, I, I believe that if you want to buy it and you can negotiate the price, then you can, as part of the contract, make it ADA. But they can charge for it. I, I mean, okay. it, in other words, they, they they can. It's called reasonable. They all right. they have to do is make reasonable accommodations. So a reasonable accommodation might be this. You know, Steve, this model may not work well, but we have another model that would be better for for widening the doors and doing this. That's reasonable. Okay. Or hey, Steve, um, you know, this is uh, this is well under construction. It would be very expensive to retrofit. Let's do a new one. I mean. Okay. Reasonable accommodations. But, um, yeah, so if you're looking at new homes, you ask up front about wheelchair accommodation, wheelchair accessibility. Okay, so the second one is if you buy a new home and you put enough down to have equity, yes, can you, can you do a reverse mortgage? Well, you can, but what would – now, okay, so let me get this straight then. You have cash. To put down on the house. You'll we put the... Some, yeah. Okay, like, tell me how much. Let's talk real stuff. Um, I'm not really sure what she has. Give me, an, give me an idea. A hundred? Mm, maybe 60, 70. Okay, let's say 75 grand you put down on a house. Okay. Okay. You're not good. It depends on the price of the house. Because with a reverse loan, a reverse loan requires at least... 50%, um, uh, 50%. I mean, in other words, they don't want to loan more than 50% of value, okay? Okay. So they don't, I, I mean, th- that's it, just 50% usually. And that's if you're really old. So the best yeah. you're going to get is 50% of your equity. Um, is really old. What's that? I mean, 50% loan to value. What is that? What is really old? Unless you're over 75, you're not going to get more than that. Okay. All right. So, That's Steve, what, what I'm saying is a reverse loan is a good idea for some people. 
It's not for, for others. It's just not. And it depends on, for example, putting money down probably won't give you enough money to get it back. But I don't know okay. why you would do that. If you already have the money, you don't need the reverse loan. It would be silly to have it. I would take that money and put it in some interest-bearing account. 